In 2003, a marine survey showed that Barnabas was no longer safe to go to sea. She was kept on a mud berth at Martin Hurd's boatyard at Tregatreath, while the Cornish Maritime Trust made efforts to secure sufficient funding to carry out the necessary restoration. In 2005, an award from the Heritage Lottery Fund made the restoration of Barnabas possible and she was brought to the Penzance Dry Dock where the work would be carried out. The garboards and some planking were removed to fully assess the extent of the necessary restoration work. Bob Cann was awarded the contract to restore Barnabas. The planking's gone dead behind the frames where the fastenings are. Every time we try and get a bit of plank out, it just snaps off on the fastenings because it's absolutely dead. But in between, the wood's quite good, but it's dead with the fastenings. The garboards, well, we started taking that out and it just fell out because all the fastenings have rotted away. Sid Fisher was appointed surveyor and produced a detailed survey report on the full extent of the work that needed to be done to bring Barnabas back to her former glory. Akrapu and Barnaby Shepherd construct a supporting framework. Heavy plywood panels are cut to shape and fit accurately to secure the hull form. This framework will cradle the hull and support it while the keel is replaced. The new keel will be two inches deeper than the old one. The extra two inches will be inside the boat, so that the external profile of the original hull is maintained. These blocks establish the position the new keel will take. The keel bolts are cut through and the old keel removed. Rob Chudley records details of the keel, particularly the angles of the rabbit into which the garboards are fitted. Alternate planks are removed, but the hull shape is kept secured by the cradling framework. Oak for the new keel, framing and some of the planking is delivered. The tree used for the keel was grown at Bain Tree in Essex. It is over 40 feet long and perfectly straight along its length.
Andy Savage squares up the new key. A similar piece of oak will be used for the stem and stern post. Barnaby Shepherd prepares plywood templates for the new floors. Each template is accurately shaped to ensure that the existing form of the hull is maintained. This notch in the floor piece will sit over the keel. Barry Dan uses the chainsaw to cut an outline shape of the floors. They will be accurately shaped to the templates. The newly formed keel has been put in position. Rob cuts the notch in a floor. New floor pieces have been put in position. And he shapes up a forward floor with a power plane. He now checks the accuracy of the fit and makes adjustments to fit it more snugly into the keel. The floors in this section of the boat are deep because they will support the engine mounts. To assist accurate drilling for the keel boats, vertical laths are fixed for guidance. Extra long drill bits are required for this work, particularly in the stern where keel boats can be over three feet in length. A layer of white lead is applied where the floor pieces join the keel. Keel bolts of various lengths are required. These are galvanized steel and are tarred prior to fixing. Templates are taken for each individual piece of framing.
The angles are carefully recorded at various positions on the framing pieces so that they can be shaped to fit perfectly within the existing hull. Suitable 3-inch thick oak boards are selected for each of the component pieces of the framework and they are marked up for cutting. They are rough cut to shape with a chainsaw. A special adjustable band saw is used to cut the accurate shape of the frame components. The angles are taken and recorded on the indicator. The angle will change as the cut progresses. So the required angle at the various positions along the cut are recorded on the angle indicator. The edge of the piece is marked so that the positions can be seen from below. Teamwork is necessary for accurate cutting. The blade is adjusted as the cuts progress. There are over 160 component pieces involved in the framework of the boat. Each with its own distinctive shape which must be accurately reproduced to fit precisely within the hull of Barnabas. The framework pieces are then cleaned up using a hand plane. They are checked to ensure an accurate fit. Tar is applied where the oak framework pieces join together. The frame pieces are held in position by temporary screw fixing to the existing planking. Strap pieces, called futtocks, are used to join the upper frame pieces to the floors. These are drilled through using a special angle drill that fits between the frames.
Galvanized bolts are coated with tar and tapped into place. These are tightly bolted up. The restoration of Barnabas required the replacement of over 160 individual pieces of framework. During the framework restoration, replacement work is carried out on the stern with the fitting of a new knee over the deadwood. This is shaped from a substantial piece of oak heartwood. A scarf joint is formed that will take a new stern apron piece. Clamped in position, it is drilled through for the longest keelboat on the boat. The template for the new bow is carefully fitted to the old apron. A suitable piece of oak is selected for the bow piece or stem. A mortise and tenon joint is formed to connect the stem to the keel. The new stem is manhandled into position. It is tapped down to ensure a correct fit. Rebated for the planking, it is set in position and the old bow apron is removed.
securely fixed, the new bow apron is now dropped in behind the fixed stem. White lead is again used for the joints between these timbers. A new stern post is formed. White lead is used on the mortise and tenon joint. The new oak stern post is dropped into its position on the keel. It is securely held in position. A boat will secure the stern post to the knee. The mortise and tenon joints securing the stem and stern post to the keel are pegged. The new stern apron is shaped to fit precisely behind the stern post and to fit into the scarf joint on the knee. Satisfied the apron piece will fit correctly, it is withdrawn to apply the white lead to the joint surfaces. Barnabas is now ready for planking. A working platform has been erected and a steamer box constructed. This is placed outside the workshop building and insulated to contain the heat. Gas is used to heat water in the boiler and steam passed into the box. Each of the galvanized nails or spikes has a collar made from cotton caulking.
The first plank to be fixed is a sheer strake and is of oak. The team must work fast to clamp this into position while it is still hot and pliable. Planks are drilled and countersunk for nailing. Each spike is driven home using an iron punch. The shear strake on the starboard bow is next fitted in position. Oak boards are used for the shear streaks. These are paired on both sides. Oak is also used for the garbers, which are fixed to the keel, and the bill strake on which the boat will rest when dried out in a tidal harbour like St. Ives. The rest of the planking is of larch. This was grown in Scotland. Plywood templates are made for each plank. They are measured to match exactly the width of each plank replaced. The templates are positioned on the selected boards and marked up. Here, Andy Savage marks out a garbage straight on an oak board. Portable circular saws are used to cut the planks to shape. Following the lines of the hull, surprising shapes are revealed when planks are projected flat. The angles on the edge of each plank varies along the length of the hull, 
and these angles must be carefully recorded. Each plank is then planed to the required angles. Details are also taken of the angles required at the ends of the planks where they abut the stem or stern. Every plank is put through the thicknesser to smooth the surface and ensure that all planks retain the correct thickness. The ends of planks taper slightly to four and a half. And where required, the inside surface of a plank is hollowed to sit more snugly on curved frames. The planks require two hours in the steamer box, one hour for each inch of thickness. But the planks need to be bent and clamped into place in a matter of minutes. A sash clamp is used to pull the plank into line. Sash clamps are used to close the seams between the planking. Tar is applied to the frames behind each plank. There are 17 strakes on each side of Barnabas from the rail down to the keel. And each strake is made up of two planks, one fore and one aft. The joints, or butts are, 
of course staggered over a number of frames to ensure maximum strength for seaworthiness. It was necessary to replace all the planking in the restoration of Barnabas, and this involved shaping and fixing 70 individual planks. Where sash clamps cannot be used to tighten up the seams, wedges are used. Over 2,600 nails or spikes were used in the replanking of Barnabas. The last piece, called the closer, closes the hull. All the planking seams require caulking. The caulking here is cotton and is driven in using the traditional caulking irons and mallet. This involves caulking about 1500 feet of planking seams on a boat of this size. The planking is meticulously fared off, revealing the beautiful lines of the Barnabas hull. Red lead putty is applied to the fixing holes and all the seams. A line is used to remark the waterline. Level horizontal boards are set up at the required height at the bow and at the stern. A line stretched between the two defines the level of the waterline along the curving hull. A lath is fixed to the level of these marks. A line is scored into the planking along the length of the boat. Andy Savage shapes the keel at the bow.
Barry Dan cuts a piece of heavy oak that Stuart Robinson will use to shape a breast hook. Barnaby Shepherd shapes a deck beam. Rob Chudley marks the required deck camber on a new oak beam. Joints are cut on the deck beams to take the carlings. The breast hook is in place in the bow. Work continues to complete the deck beam structure. Carlings are fitted between the deck beams. The hull is primed and painted. The top sides are coated with traditional Stockholm tar. Below the waterline will be anti-fouled. The keel band is bolted into place. This consists of a steel boxing formed around the keel which substantially protects and reinforces the strength of the oak keel. The ends are suitably finished off with steel plates bolted and welded in position.
the boat fixings are smoothed down and epoxy resin is used to streamline these underwater fixings. The drive shaft is drilled through the stern on the port side. This is a lengthy drilling process using a specially prepared extended drill bit. Correct alignment is crucial and here the drill emerges right on target. It is time now to return Barnabas to the transporting trailer in preparation for the approaching lunch day. This is a tricky procedure within the confines of the workshop building. The Penzance Dry Dock team with Bob Can Shipwrights expertly carry out this task. With the transporting trailer now in position underneath, Barnabas is again propped steady for the restoration work to continue. This template is for a deck covering board which follows the curved shape of the boat. The oak used is selected from a suitable curved piece. This is run through the thicknesser to ensure the correct depth. The template is positioned and the required curve shape is drawn onto the timber.
The covering board is then cut out. Covering boards are also cut on the bandsaw and finished off by planing. Deck covering boards are in position on the bow. The stern post is shaped to take the rudder gudgeons. The new gudgeons are made of bronze and are riveted into position. The stern post and apron are drilled through and bolted together. Repairs are made to the original rudder and the bronze pintle gudgeons are positioned. The existing rudder cheeks are reused. The external prop shaft block is shaped, primed and painted. The shaft bracket is fabricated in stainless steel. Here, a rubbing strake is being finished. It is oak and is steamed before being fitted along the shear line. The narrow four and a half pieces are chamfered in position. Modern epoxy filler is used here on the rubbing strake fixings. But the lines of these rubbing strakes are traditional to the West Comer lovers of St. Ives and Mounts Bay.
Work progresses on the hatch combings. These boards divide the compartments of the hold. In the center is the fish room. The footline locker is forward and the nets are stored aft. This beam supports the hatch covers. The stem band is positioned and will be welded to the keel band. The hatch cover boards are dropped into place. The interior of the hull is ready to be subdivided with bulkheads. Meanwhile, work progresses on the capping rails. Scarf joints are again used. On deck, John Bray prepares a cover board and the deck blocks for fixing. Edges are sealed where sicker flex will be used. This is a modern flexible mastic material and is used to ensure water tightness in these crucial areas of the deck. This will help to prolong the life of the restored Barnabas. The covering board is secured and fixed in position. The masking tape keeps the deck clean. The tops of the stanchions are cut to form tenons. Ten plates are marked up so that the mortises on the undersides of the capping rails will be accurately positioned for fitting.
Below, the bulkheads are being formed. These are the divisions between the compartments in the boat. They are made from tongue and groove pine boards and the joints of veed. Double layers of boards are used. This is the traditional construction methods for subdividing bulkheads. The new engine has been installed. The interior of the boat is thoroughly painted. The top rail is dropped into position. The mortars and tenons fit perfectly. The cheeks have now been fitted to the rudder. The top rail scarf joints are drilled for bolting together. The rudder is now hung and the rails are now finished on the stern. The new mast box is formed. Pitch has been poured into the spaces between the frames over the stern. The stern hatch combing is formed and put in place. Scuppers to drain the water from the deck are drilled through and shaped. The launch of Barnabas now draws near and finishing touches are made.
chalks are removed and the tractor arrives to tow Barnabas across to the wet dock. After nine months of restoration work, she emerges from the workshop building. Waters and well wishes are in attendance. Craned aloft, the fine lines of the Barnabas hull can once again be seen. Barnabas, back in her element, is admired by a resident. Five tons of lead ballast is delivered to the wet dock. This is manhandled onto Barnabas and shipped below to correctly ballast the boat. Each ingot weighs about four stone. Work begins on the decking. Each deck plank is marked and cut to shape. The timber is large. The top edge has a slight chamfer. Planks are nailed to the deck beams. Nails are countersunk and the holes plugged. The plugs are glued in place and then cleaned back flush with the deck. Rob prepares a rope stringer rail while Barry undercoats the capping rail. John and Bob clean away any shavings and sawdust from the deck while Andy caulks the deck seams.
Hot pitch will be used on the seams, but first the deck planks are protected with masking tape. Hot pitch is poured into all the seams. The masking tape is removed to reveal clean planking. The hatch combing is painted while Ack cleans back the pitch decking. Painting continues while Andy forms a doorway to the storage cuddy in the stern. Work continues on the engine box and the companionway ladders. The restoration of Barnabas nears completion. The master stepped and rigged. Members of the Cornish Maritime Trust bend on the sails to the lugs, ready for sea trials. <laughs> on the evening of August the 23rd, 2006, Barnabas sets forth on the first of her sea trials. She leaves Penzance Harbour to hoist sail once more after an interlude of three years.
Rob Chudley works on a piece of the framework. This piece of framing is called a futtock. It joins the upper frame to the floor. Ak Ropuyi prepares a plywood template for the futtock on the opposite side. This is frame 13 at the center of the boat. Using an adjustable set square, the angles are carefully recorded against the existing planking. It is essential to accurately record these angles for each component piece of the framework structure so that it can be shaped to fit perfectly within the existing hull. A piece of oak is selected. Its grain and condition are checked for suitability. The outline of the template is marked on the piece of oak. Spray paint is used here. Barry Dan uses a chainsaw to roughly cut out the shape of the piece. It is important that this is cut out larger than required to allow for the beveled angled edges necessary to ensure a correct fit. This footwork is on the center frame of the boat, so it is fairly square. But the slightest angles are nevertheless recorded to ensure that the framework fits exactly within the existing hull shape. Ack marks out the positions where the angle readings were recorded. The band saw is adjustable. The table remains level, but the blade can be adjusted. It can be adjusted up to an angle greater than 45 degrees. Ack adjust the angle of the blade to correspond to the readings he has taken inside the boat. The blade settings are marked on tape set on the angle indicator. The angle is changed by turning the wheel. The angle of the blade can be adjusted as the piece of wood is being cut. It requires teamwork to ensure that the blade is always adjusted to the correct angle as the cutting proceeds. Ack smooths out any saw cuts marked on the futtock. Tar is applied to the surfaces of the framework pieces that are joined together. Held securely in place with G cramps, Rob drills through. Galvanized bolts are used to secure the futtock to the framework.
Ark now checks that the footer fits perfectly in its position. Satisfied with the fit, Ark proceeds to finish shaping the footer. Barnaby Shepherd puts the piece through the thicknesser planer to clean up the surface. The cutting process is repeated for the inside edge of the footwork. Checked again for accurate fitting in its position. The ends are marked up for the chamfer. This restoration involved replacing over 160 component pieces of framework, each of which was painstakingly cut and shaped to fit perfectly within the existing hull of Barnabas. The beam shelf is oak. It supports the deck beams. Scarf joints are used to join the two lengths of beam shelf of midships. A template for a replacement stanchion is carefully taken by Arc Repu. The required angles are recorded for cutting on the adjustable bandsaw. The outline shape is marked on a selected piece of oak which is put through the thickness of Rob Chudley, assisted by Barnaby Shepherd, fixes the lath to define the line of the garboard. 
the garboard joins the keel. The rebate, or rabbit, as it is known in nautical terms, is prepared. The garboard will be fitted into this rabbit. The shaping of this garboard is carefully considered to ensure it fits perfectly in the keel. Templates are made of the shape at each frame along the length of the garboard. Rob now marks up the garboard which is oak. The templates divine the shape the edge of the garboard needs to be to fit into the rabbit along the keel. The edge is shaped with the planer and carefully finished by hand planing. The garboard is cut to length. Ack has the uncomfortable job of cutting the limbers in the floors. These must be completed before the garbage are fitted. Rob finishes the bow end of the garbage.
The inside surface of the garboard is shaped to ensure a tight fit against the curve of the frames. The fit of the garboard is checked and the fitting process is discussed. The limber holes in the floors of the framing allow any water that collects in the bilges to be pumped out. <laughs> Andy sharpens the ads, a tool traditionally associated with boat building. Here is Rob using one earlier. The garboard has been steamed for two hours. Teamwork ensures that it is fitted and clamped in position in a matter of minutes while it is still pliable. The garboards on Barnabas twist through 90 degrees in a few feet at the bow. The clamps hold it tightly on the frames and into the keel. And cut. <laughs>